In this video, you're going to learn when to use insertion sort and how to perform it. These are exactly the same steps I use whenever I have to sort an array. So if you're having trouble understanding how the algorithm exactly works, in this video, I'm actually going to show you an easy and fast way of its implementation. Let's say a client wants to know information about how many and what types of shirts have been sold over a weekend sale. Well, now it's a good time to use a sorting algorithm. Now, since the client has only around 20 types of shirts for sale, you can use insertion sort algorithm to sort the number of sold shirts of each design in ascending order. Now, you may ask yourself, why do we need to choose insertion sort as our algorithm when there's other faster sorting algorithms out there like quick sort or merge sort? Well, we know the client has a low limited amount of type of shirts, in our case, 20. And insertion sort is actually very efficient on sorting short lists. It has a low overhead, so anything less than 25 in general. Also, if the data we get from the client happens to be almost sorted, insertion sort here seems to be your best bet as it is stable. And by stable, I mean that the algorithm doesn't make the numbers jump around too much. And if the array happens to be almost sorted, then the algorithm actually skips those sorted elements. But you will see what I'm talking about once we get into it. So before we start sorting elements using insertion sort, we need to know the following rules. So the first one is to start looking at the array from left to right. The second would be to examine each item and compare it to the items on its left. And the third is to insert the item in the correct position in the array. Okay, now since we know what insertion sort is, let's try to take an example and see how it can actually be implemented. Remember we talked about that we needed to find out for our client how many t-shirts have been sold from certain brands during a weekend sale. So let's try to take an example right now. Let's try to take an array with a sold t-shirt. Okay, so this is what our array looks like. We have the elements 4, 9, 6, 2, 10, and 3. And these numbers actually represent the number of sold t-shirts during that weekend sale. So we have four t-shirts from a brand, nine from a different one, and so on. But let's try to actually see how we can sort this array using insertion sort. So if you remember the rules we talked about a couple of minutes ago, we need to take the first element in the array and compare it to the elements on its left. But since our first element in the array does not have any elements on its left, then we consider it sorted. So we add four to our sorted list. Now let's take a look at nine. Nine, it's bigger than four. And because nine is bigger than four, we add it to our sorted array. Now we move our current element to six. We take a look at six and we compare it to the elements on its left. Six is smaller than nine, but is bigger than four. And that tells me that I need to swap six with nine. And our array will actually look like this. Four, six, nine, two, 10, and three. So our sorted array has three elements now and is this big. All right, so we're halfway through. Now we need to look at two. We take two and we compare it to the elements on its left. So two is smaller than all the elements on its left, which tells us that we need to add it at the beginning of the list. So the list would be like this, two, four, six, nine, 10, and three. All right, now our sorted list has four elements. We're almost there. So we look at 10 now. And since 10 is the biggest element in our list, we add this to our sorted array. And for 
the last part, we move our current element to 3. And since we compare 3 to the element on its left, we can see that 3 needs to be here between 2 and 4. So our sorted array would look like this. 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, and 10. So this is what our initial array looks like sorted using insertion sort algorithm. All right, so this was insertion sort. I really hope you can see how easy it is to go through it and why it is important to always use it on a short list and on a smaller piece of data. All right, so this was it for today. Please let me know down in the comments which one of these following algorithms, A, selection sort, B, merge sort, or C, quick sort, you find the most challenging and I will film that for the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.